This is Against Time with GrinderSchool.com. Uh, today I'll be doing something a little different. Uh, I'll be reviewing uh, recent Sit and Goes played on Poker Stars by Grinder School member PGM1971. Uh, this serves two purposes. I'll be able to look at Sit and Goes from another player's perspective, and also I want to address the recent change in structure for the nine handed Sit and Goes on Poker Stars where they begin adding the antes even in the first blind level. Um, as usual, when I review my own sit and goes, I'll be skipping over most of the hands I don't become involved with. Uh, the exception to that here will be any hands he chooses to fold, which I think uh, should be played, I will uh, address as well. So we'll be talking a lot about opening ranges and what's appropriate to open uh, in each position as these things occur. Um, here he chooses to fold King Jack uh, with five players behind. That's fine in the 1530, especially uh, with this uh, under the gun lump here. A lot of times you'll be getting in uh, behind here if you raise it up. Um, and this early on, we really want to reduce as many of those marginal situations as possible and take only clearly advantageous spots. Uh, the effect of the ante is that we will be taking more of those marginal spots than we otherwise would, but this simply just isn't good enough in this spot, so letting King Jack go is the right decision here. Uh, H should be a raise. Uh, I like the 2.5x raise. It's the same raise I make myself in this blind level. Um, what's more important than the raise size, uh, as long as it's between 2 and 3x, is that you're consistent with it. Uh, you don't want to be changing your raise sizes based on your hand strength or observant opponents will pick up on that and will use that information against you. Um, so this is a good raise spot. We get a shove here from a short stack player uh, and we get a flat call here from the player in the big blind. Um, I would definitely be willing to call the short stack player shove had this player not flatted. Uh, however, this being the case, uh, this is early in the tournament. Uh, I don't really have a lot of information on this player. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up being uh, kind of a mediocre hand here. Um, and I certainly expect EPO's hand to be mediocre. However, with two players pretty much uh, committed here, especially against a stack size of just over 1300, 1350, um, you really don't want to get all, all in a three-way collision here unless you know for certain that they both have very marginal hands. So I think a fold here is the right decision, though it may actually end up being the best hand. Um, King Jack is about where I expected. This is even looser than I thought he may have. Um, I'm, I'm not too surprised by it, but it is looser than I expected. Of course, if you could see their hands pre-flop, you'd get all in with the eights. But against what generally is the strength of hands you're up against here, folding is the right decision. Okay, he just checks behind with the queen nine, that's fine. And with no hand and no draw, just checking it down is the right decision here. And it looks like he'll let it go. Uh, shouldn't be calling this. Looks like he folds it. That's the right move. Okay, he picks up aces here. We get a limp from Kono, a very loose passive player as we've seen. Um, he limps behind with the aces. This is not what I would recommend doing. Um, I'd make it like 280, something like that. i definitely raise it up pre-flop. Um, it's very well hidden as it is by limping behind with the aces, but you're also giving quite a bit of opportunity for players to draw it on you for free here. And we know these players are going to be willing to call a preflop raise of like 280, so uh, this is not what I would recommend doing. Uh, I would raise it up here. Um, looks like we're going to have a four way pot. Flop is 3 4 5. Aces should feel very confident on this dry uh, board. Um, we get a lead out for 80, a call. And then a big raise, um, not a big fan of this either. Um, it's like a pot-sized raise here, leaving fewer chips behind than we're in the initial raise. Uh, this is not uh, how I'd recommend playing it. Uh, I would say a flat call um, or a smaller raise would be a better decision. Um, you want you want to line it up so if you're going to raise, you want to be able to get all in on the turn by making a reasonable size bet. If you make it like 600 here and get a call, you're all in on the turn is essentially like irrelevant. Um, there's so few chips behind compared to what will be in the pot. Uh, this isn't how I'd recommend playing it. Um, even just a shove here would be better than this raise. Uh, I'd probably make it like 300 and then shove the turn uh, or flat here either way. Uh, looks like we get a flat here. And a fold 
and then he's going to contribute the rest of the stack um, on the turn here, which is expected, and gets called by an open-ended straight draw from the the idiot end of it. These three, four, five. Um, this is a huge overcommitment by Sergey, um, and probably not an optimal line here by PGM. Okay, ace four is too weak to play this far out of position. Into six players, my general recommendation in the 4080 or the 2550 blinds, uh, something like uh, ace jack offsuit, um, ace 10 suited. You might be able to go a little bit looser, um, but not much. Maybe ace nine suited, ace 10 at the very loosest if the table's very tight. Uh, but ace four is certainly going to be a fold as he does. Okay, this ace eight suited, he chooses to limp behind a limper here. This is a mistake. Um, you should be raising it up. Uh, we know this player is capable of limping just about anything in this spot. Um, as an open raise, like 240 or 270 would be fine, even 300. But after a limper, you need to be defaulting to what I recommend to players is 2.5x plus 1 per limper, or in the earlier blinds, 3x plus 1 per limper. Um, I'd probably make it like 400 or a little more than 400 maybe here uh, and definitely isol isolation raise this ace eight suited. You'd certainly raise it from the cutoff if no other player had come in and we know this player's limping range to be very wide so I would make it an iso raise here of about 400. Uh, we, after the limp we do get a shove here. Um, I don't think he'll probably call this from what I've seen. I think he'll probably fold. Uh, it depends what Scorpion Fish's tendencies are. If he's a loose aggressive player, you'd certainly call this. Um, you have about 240 chips of dead money in here, um, and you've already contributed 120 chips yourself. The odds are actually quite good to call here. Uh, unless this is a tight player, you should be calling. Looks like he does fold. Uh, fold the ace deuce off, so you should be raising that from the cutoff in this blind level. See what he does with the fives. Uh, you definitely should fold this. You don't want a three-way all-in collision with a small pair. Um, definitely don't want to go up against four overs here. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Queen-10 suited would have certainly been a raise. With this deep open shove, uh, it's really not a good shove no matter what he has here. You don't want to be shoving that deep, but you can't do anything with Queen-10 suited after you see that, so you just have to fold. It looks like we'll move into the money here. Um, I'd probably limp here in the small blind with the 8 deuce suited. It's only 60 chips. There's already 285 here. Um, over 300 chips involved. It costs you 60 to call. Um, you definitely get a good enough odds to limp here with any suited hand. Especially if the player in the big blind that doesn't have a tendency of raising it up after a limp. Uh, the jack should be a raise, not a shove. Uh, you're what about 15 blinds deep here you can get definitely get by with a raise and call any shove all in it looks like he's a little timid to play post flop here in a bubble scenario that's not unusual uh, however that tendency should be avoided when you have a hand as strong as jacks um, I could see open shoving deuces threes fours fives maybe even sixes here um, and some other hands as well so you don't have a polarized range of only small pairs however uh, Jack should be entered here with a small raise, as with many other hands, they wouldn't know exactly where you are. So this is a little too uh, deep to open shove the jacks. Okay, we get a limp here in the small blind. He checks behind with a 10-5. That's the right play. Uh, we get a check and then just a shove all in. Uh, this is not how you should approach this. You're only getting called by a hand that beats you. Uh, you're essentially putting your... 18, 1900 chips on the line to win 285 um, in the hopes that they just don't have a hand here. Uh, that's not the right approach. You can bet 180 here and achieve the same goal without risking your own stack. As you can see, an ace is also likely to check here and he just gets caught and will finish in third place because of it. Um, so a couple of mistakes in this tournament. Still an end the money finish, which is always favorable. Uh, get your money back at least for the tournament. But a couple of mistakes in this one. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the next game here. This next one will be a little longer. I believe he finishes in second. Uh, there's quite a few more hands to look at, which is always nice. Um, 
I believe in these two tournaments in particular. I picked them because there were a lot of spots I disagreed with. Uh, I've reviewed several of this player's tournaments, and there were a lot of spots that I was fine with that I thought he made good decisions. I wanted to pick tournaments as well where there was disagreement so we can look at a difference in perspective among regs. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started here. Go ahead and skip over this hand. This one as well. Okay, 9-8 offsuit, had it been limped to him, he should come in with a limp. With this isolation raise of 4x in front of him, folding is the right decision, which is what he chooses to do here. All right, this I kind of mentioned before in the previous uh, hand history. Uh, Ace-Jack should be raised into six players, regardless of blind level, as should King-Queen. Uh, you can raise it into even seven players in the later blinds, but even in the 1530, you should be raising ace jack into six players. You should be raising ace queen into the whole table. Uh, king queen should be raised into six players as well. This is too tight, um, and it's a missed opportunity in my opinion. Your raising range here, as I mentioned, should be something like uh, any pair is fine. Um, you could limp some of the smaller pairs if you're more comfortable that way, but you should be playing any pair in this position in this blind level, especially with 1,500 chips behind. Um, 50 blind stack, certainly good enough of plot odds uh, to limp or raise the small pairs. Um, something like ace-10 suited plus, ace-jack offsuit plus, uh, king-queen, uh, king-jack suited, um, jack-10 suited, queen-10 suited. Suited Broadway hands are fine. You could even play like a 10-9 suited here. Uh, I play even looser than that, but if you played that hand range, it would serve you well, and you would certainly be a winning player from this position, assuming uh, adequate post-flop play as well. Okay, we get an ace-king here. Um, he faces a limp from early position, a 3x raise over that limp, and then a flat call. Um, there's a couple of options in this spot that you can take. Folding is a mistake, period. Um, you should not be folding this. Um, there's 180 plus what, 60, so 240, uh, 270, two, like 287 chips here in the middle. That's actually enough to shove preflop for it because of the ante. Uh, so shoving preflop is certainly an option. If you 3-bet, you'd have to make it like 300, and then your C-bet would be over 400. That's half your stack for a raised preflop and a, and a c-bet and you're out of position so that kind of is an awkward approach so I'm not a big fan of that because of the positional problem um, you could also flat for deceptive value I'm not a huge fan of that either I really think shoving preflop is the best play uh, you're gonna get a heads up and you're gonna be uh, ahead of each player's range um, he actually folds here um, I can't caution you against this enough that's too tight uh, folding is probably the worst thing you can do here um, making a smaller three bet to like 300 would be the second worst thing you could do flatting would be next and then I think shoving preflop is the best play because there's already um, almost a fourth of your stack in the middle at least 20 percent here so I would recommend the shove definitely not fold Let's see what these players end up having here Yeah, I mean, you're way ahead of these players' hands. Just to fold ace-king is way too tight. Uh, shoving preflop certainly would have forced these players into a fold uh, or gotten them all in way behind, both of which are excellent results. And making them fold and winning three, about 300 chips outright is certainly not a bad, uh, bad result. How much for hands here? Moving into the 40-80 blinds. Hold the queen three. Okay, he picks up jack 10 offsuit here, facing a raise from the hijack. Uh, this player is short enough in stack that you can reasonably expect 10% or less fold equity. Uh, it's not really a good spot for a re-steal. He's also raising through another short stack, and he would be aware of this. So. Uh, this is just going to be a fold. Uh, looks like PGM correctly folds here. That's the right play. I uh, don't really want to get involved with a short stack raising like this uh, with about 11 blinds. It's almost always a big hand, and even if it's not, Jack-10 is certainly not good enough to come over the top. <clears throat> this is actually pretty impressive. Um, this player is raising into seven players. And ace-queen generally ranks to be behind unless it's a very loose aggressive player. 
And he has the opportunity here to shove in for about 10 blinds. And he only has 10 blinds left. Uh, and so it would be very tempting, I think, for most players to get all in here. However, that would be a mistake. Unless this player is very loose aggressive, ace-queen is going to be uh, behind or at best even with this range. And you have essentially no fold equity here. And a lot of times you're going to run to ace-king or a pair. Um, so I actually like the fold. It's a very disciplined fold that you don't see often from regs. And it's it's definitely the right play here. So uh, that, that's a very good move here that he, he was able to lay this down. Uh, it takes quite a bit of discipline to lay hands down like that. Uh, on the opposite side of things, this is a shove uh, that was missed. It was played a little too tightly. Uh, you can shove king nine suited for ten blinds into five players all day, especially when two of those players are short stack and you'd be willing to get all in against them as well. Um, this is a missed shove for sure. Uh, you could maybe even shove this for 11 blinds, depending on the tightness or looseness of the players behind you. Uh, just to give you an idea in this spot, and what you could shove here, uh, any pair would be a shove here. So certainly king nine suited would be. So deuces plus, um, I'd probably say like ace four suited plus, uh, ace nine offsuit, uh, king nine suited plus, king jack offsuit, Queen nine suited plus uh, queen jack off suit, uh, jack nine suited, ten nine suited, and that would pretty much complete the range. Uh, king nine suited is certainly in the shoving range here. A little too tight that he lets this go. Uh, a little bit of a missed opportunity. Uh, when you're getting short like this, around 10, uh, 11 blinds, you should be pretty much taking every marginal shoving opportunity available. Everyone you pass up. Uh, is a huge detriment to your long-term profit. Um, you really have to be shoving as loosely as possible, and missing king nine suited here is is a pretty big deal. Obviously, fold the four three suited and the six ten. It looks like you'll get to see a flop here with the deuce five. Um, he's got a gut shot here. I like that he doesn't lead out at it. I mean, it's. Uh, there's several players in this pot. Uh, if he leads out here and gets called, he'll really have to shut down unless he hits his gut shot. I like that he doesn't contribute any chips and just lets it go. That'll allow him to preserve a healthy shove stack in future opportunities, which I think is a better decision. Can't do anything here. Uh, this should be a shove. Uh, he does make the shove here. Uh, the raise in the call by King-10 is fine. The shove by Ace-Jack is fine. Both players did the right thing. Uh, and it looks like the Ace-Jack will hold. Uh, he'll chip up a little bit. It looks like he has um, around 13 blinds here. Uh, I recommend folding here. A limp for a player this short is almost always indicative of a big hand. It looks very suspicious when players do this. Um, no good player would make this play, or let, let me rephrase, very few good players will make this play if they're sitting at a table with other rags. If you're sitting at a player of, uh, sitting at a table with all unknowns, I could see limping like a big hand here. Um, but in general, it, it's really suspicious looking, even to unknowns, and it, you would get probably even more action if you just shoved uh, whatever hand you were playing here, and that would be the right way to play it. Uh, but it's good that he just lets this go. Uh, no reason to try to shove over that limp with 10-9, having almost no fold equity. Um, A6 offsuit from the hijack. This is pretty close. This is the most difficult decision he's faced yet in this tournament, in my opinion. Um, from the cutoff, you would certainly raise this, make it like 320, 350, maybe even 400 would be fine. Um, from the hijack, it's a little bit more difficult. He doesn't really have a lot of chips to maneuver with. Uh, if he makes that raise, he'll be committed by odds, obviously, to call this player. Uh, it's still probably a decent steal spot, considering his image. I'd probably raise it up here. Uh, I think he's probably like uh, on the tighter side of things, uh, like an 18-15 right now, something like that, uh, like a tight aggressive reg. You could probably get away with this steal here from the hijack, and I would recommend doing so. It's very borderline, though. It's a tough spot. Uh, this is going to be a, a shove over a limp. Uh, it's about 13 blinds deep. It's a great opportunity. Um, this hand could even be profitably open shoved here if it were folded to him, especially considering how short this player and this player are. Um, so shoving over this limp is, an, is a great play. 
Um, it looks like he neglects to take the opportunity, but you should shove over this limp. Uh, it's going to be plus EV all day, um, and that's what I'd recommend doing. Another missed opportunity here. Playing a little too tight in these last two games, uh, and he's still going to finish, I believe, third and one, and uh, I think he gets second in this one, which is in the money. Uh, but imagine if none of these opportunities were missed, you know, maybe those would be first places. You never know. Okay, obviously just fold. Well, you see this even becomes a little borderline because you've got such good odds here. I probably still lean towards a fold, but it's almost good enough to come along with the five deuce suited. He does let it go here. Uh, you should certainly shove the ace eight off. Uh, he actually folds. This is a huge error. Uh, this is like a two blind shove with a two blind stack behind you. You're actually committed by odds to get in with any two here. Any two. Uh, and ace eight is way ahead of any two. This is a shove all day long. Um, as soon as the screen pops up, you should be hitting the all in button. Uh, less than two blinds, right at two blinds with the ante here and already having 100 chips in. Um, I don't see how you can fold this. This is a, a commitment spot for sure. Uh, Ace A should be getting all in here. Uh, Ace King. This 600 raise is a mistake. Uh, should be a shove. You're nine blinds deep. You just shove it. You, I mean, this player here only has a thousand chips. Uh, you only have 1800. Just go all in. No reason to get cute about it. You should be playing shove fold with your entire range, not making little small raises that draw attention. Uh, it's better to blend that range because there's only a few hands in the deck that can withstand the pressure of like a $600 raise here when you only have 1,800 chips left. Uh, that being the case, it's best to just shove or fold your entire range. It blends it better. Um, fold the ace deuce is the right play. You don't want to re-steal for 11 blinds over a hijack raise with ace deuce offsuit, so that's a good fold here. Uh, and you see he's shoving here for 11 blinds with Ace King, but before he was raising with 9 blinds. doesn't really make sense to me. Um, I do agree that this is a shove. I just think the previous one was a shove as well, and that would be my critique on it. Is that we should go all in. The 6s are fine to call with. Uh, the Ace King looks like we'll win the showdown. Uh, blinds have gone up to 150-300, leaving our hero with uh, between 11 and 12 blinds. This race, this isn't the player we're concerned with, but uh, this raise over a limp is always a mistake. Uh, just go all in here if you're going to play the hand. Don't make one of these cute little raises. A min raise over a limp, it looks suspicious. You'll get action, but you get action shoving as well. Um, not the right way to approach it. King Queen should be a shove from this position for about 10 blinds with a hijack. Also a missed shove here. A lot of missed opportunities in this hand history in the previous one. Um, not to harp on PGM. You know, the previous videos I, I've seen him make a lot of good plays. It's just that it's worth pointing out the mistakes as well. That's how we learn. Uh, there have been many times where I've had, you know, players go through my hand histories and point out mistakes, and that's how I learn from them. And so uh, a lot of missed opportunities in these two videos uh, that are worth drawing attention to so that those decisions don't occur in the future. Um, I would actually call this, uh, you don't want to shove because you're never getting tamer 75 to fold based on odds. However, it's only 363 chips to call here. Um, what was it? 12, 13, 14, 17. There's like almost 1800 chips in the middle and it costs you like 300 to call. Uh, it's like six to one odds. One time is seven is 14.28%. It's excellent odds. You cannot fold this. You, you have to see the flop with the hand that plays well post flop. It does look like he folds it. If I could see their hands, I'd even more certainly get all in here. Uh, or flat here, I'm sorry, and see the flop. And it wouldn't have worked out in his favor, but it's still a spot that you should definitely be seeing the flop. It's such a coordinated hand. Uh, you have position on the player who still uh, has chips to maneuver with. It's just an excellent spot based on odds, and it really shouldn't be neglected. Okay, it looks like I'm moving to bubble play here. Um, this is actually too brave. I think it ends up working out. I can't remember. Um, but look at it this way. You're on the bubble. 
a player raises 600 into you and you don't even have 10 blinds, the likelihood of getting called here is probably like 90%. And you're getting all in with ace three offsuit when there's a player with fewer chips than you to act behind. Uh, and another player with fewer chips than you over here, you're risking your whole stack on a marginal rag ace when you're almost never going to see a fold. I think he actually ends up getting a fold. Yeah, he does. Uh, however, this is a mistake. You should just fold that. Um, whereas most of the disagreements have been in, in the side of being too cautious, this was too aggressive. You should actually lay that down uh, because of the chip stacks of these two player uh, players. I see him dictate a fold here, and that's how it should be approached. Fold the jack seven. This is an open shove for just under 12 blinds from the cutoff. He misses this shove here. This is a uh, pretty standard easy shove, I would say, for 12 blinds from the cutoff. Um, uh, even with these two player stacks, I mean, you have like seven blinds here, a little less than that here. Um, I, I think it's still fine to do that, and that's how I'd play it. You, you want to be taking guaranteed marginal plus EV spots as the aggressor here rather than making small raises. You don't want to make it, for instance, like 600 and then face an all-in for one of these two players, which you'd be committed to call anyway by odds, or face an all-in here, which you'd have to fold to. It'd be better just to open shove it and take the guaranteed edge, and that's what I recommend. It's like we'll get an all-in from this player. Um, he does call here. I think that's probably the right play. Um, he's got enough chips here. He's risking about half of his stack, and he should be ahead of this player's range, though not this player's specific hand. Uh, looks like it'll work out for him, and he'll move into the money here. Uh, shove the 10-9 offsuit. He chooses to walk the player. That's a mistake. Uh, you can shove 10-9 offsuit here for, hell, 15 blinds would be fine. Uh, and this is like 8 or 9 blinds, so this is an easy shove with the 10-9 offsuit that was missed. Uh, Ace-5 should be a small raise here, and once you make that raise, you should be willing to call this player's shove. He does he limps instead. Um, I've said it many times before and I'll say it again. If you're in the cutoff for the button and you're the first to enter the pot, never, ever, ever, and I mean ever, enter the pot with a limp. You come in with a raise and take advantage of the position you have. Uh, limping here is just purely a mistake. Just come in with a raise. I never limp the button. I haven't limped the button in years. Uh, and I don't know any uh, professional or semi-professional players who do. Uh, so I would definitely come in here with a raise and be willing to call this player's shove. Uh, looks like he'll take a shot at this for less than a third of the pot on a very coordinated board. Not a good c-bet size either. Uh, looks like he gets called and he'll shut down and surrender the pot. Blinds have gone up. Okay, he doesn't put any chips out here. I, I'm okay with that. I, I would probably, I'd probably call it, but I'm okay with that just to preserve your your shove stack integrity here. Um, so no real problem with this, I guess. Hold the 9-4, shove the a7 suited, which he does. Uh, this is actually a shove as well. Looks like he misses it. Uh, fold the king-8 offsuit. Looks like these two players will collide. Uh, don't make little cute raises like this on the bubble. You're just asking for opponents to shove all in and force you to fold. I, I can I know from experience that if a player shoves all in on him, he's not gonna he's not gonna call. Um, so if he's not gonna call, he should just take advantage of the shove. And yeah, I couldn't even remember this hand, but I just knew what he would do. You should just shove the hand. Don't make a small raise and fold it. You're just you're giving these players huge advantage over you when you do that. I mean. If I sat down with, with PGM at this table, every time he made a small raise, I'd just come all in over the top. And nine times out of ten, I'm going to make him fold and accumulate massive chips. And one time, he's going to catch me, and I'm still going to win one time in three of showdowns. So um, don't be making those small raises on the bubble like that when you only have 11 or 12 blinds. Obviously, get all in with the jacks. Uh, this is not a limp spot. This is a shove spot with the threes. Once again, never, ever, ever, ever limp the button. Looks like he'll flop a set here. He just flats this. That's probably the right play. Uh, and obviously, you're calling the all-in. 
Uh, nothing this player really did wrong having two pairs, kind of an inevitable collision. Uh, looks like we'll probably have an elimination here. Okay, moving to heads up. Blinds are three and six hundred, which means you should be playing the heads, na heads up Nash push fold equilibrium at these stack sizes. Uh, King seven suited is not a raise; it's a shove. So just go all in here. The blinds are only you're only ten blinds deep. Why make the small raise of the fold to a shove? You could just profitably shove. So go all in with the King seven suited. Don't make the small raise. Uh, and you see, he ended up giving up the pot. Uh, he lost a lot of chips here when he could have just taken it outright. Um, can't call the shove with the jack nine. Shove the ace five suited. Uh, once again, don't make these small raises. He's going to get flat out again here. Um, and he's lucky that he's even able to shove this hand down because this player could have just betted this and taken it. And he'd be down to 4,300 chips. And I can tell you right now that if this player made a bet of like, say, 1,500, PGM would have folded. And this player would just accumulate another pot. And he'd be down to 4,000 chips from like six, six or 7,000 when he could have just shoved it. And if he shoved it, he'd just get a fold and accumulate a lot of chips in comparison with the effective stack size. So this is a mistake as well. Uh, he'll probably fold here. He does. Against a good reg, you'd call with the jack-10 suited. Shove the queen-jack suited. Uh, he chooses the limp, also a mistake. And he's going to surrender another pot unnecessarily because of that. See all these chips that he's just sending over to his opponent by making limps and small raises rather than shoves. It's a mistake. Shove the sixes, which he does. Uh, against this player, I'd probably let this go, but I'd be calling any reg here with the king of six suited. Uh, I think you can actually shove this. He chooses to limp instead. And he'll surrender another pot unnecessarily. Uh, shove the sevens over the limp, which he does. He gets called with aces. Pretty standard collision here. And he'll take second in this game. So once again, not to harp on PGM. He showed a lot of good hand histories in the past. But th these two in particular I chose because there were a lot of errors. Um, and a lot of spots that could be played differently to more success. I'm almost certain he would have won this tournament if he would have uh, been shoving rather than limping and making small raises in a lot of these spots. So... Um, I hope you all enjoyed that. There was a lot of good information to be gained here. Uh, once again, if you have any questions, you can contact me at againsttime at gmail.com. You can do the same for training as well.